It's a long line of research and sociology. I've argued whether or not teaching is a profession or a skilled occupation. And um, among the criteria that are set out for a profession is a if I can remember them all, is a shared knowledge base, a commitment to client, commitment to profession. Um, and there's a fourth one, which I'm can't, not recalling right now. Uh, oh, collegial, collegial authority. Um, what's been true of teaching in the United States has been um, really a, a disconnect between the way one would describe the, the occupation and those professional criteria. The state or the bureaucracy can certify a teacher as having qualifications and certifications, but cannot command professionalism and cannot um, act on those criteria of professionalism. So it's not bureaucratically um, defined and it can't be occupationally. Um, what we've come to see is that teaching as a profession is really locally constructed in the school environment. Um, it's part of a professional learning community and the engine of that community is inquiry, uh, teachers' use of evidence and data around their students, and that inquiry really serves as the engine of a professional community, and in that context, um, we see the development of shared responsibility, shared accountability, um, collegial authority, a shift um, from a focus on knowledge delivery to learning, uh, a different focus on students. So, in that context, we begin to see teaching meeting the criteria of a profession, but it's locally negotiated and locally constructed. One place I would start would be with teacher training programs, teacher preparation programs, and um, providing new teachers uh, with the set of skills they would need to be part of a professional learning community. Um, so that would be a broad knowledge of their own subject area and the ideas that motivate it as well as a set of skills um, to be used with inquiry, data skills and sort of habits of mind, as well as norms of inquiry. I think this is not the case right now for teachers, so that's, I think, a real opportunity for teacher training. The thesis of my paper is that um, teaching as a profession relies on free, three forms of knowledge, uh, to professional knowledge, and one is knowledge for practice, and this is really what a teacher training program or a B.Ed. might do. And that's not just pedagogy, it's not just the technology of teaching, but it's um, the history of ideas in a, in a, in a topic, what's contested. Um, it's learning about um, child development, youth development, different cultures. So it's learning about learners. Um, it's learning about philosophy of education. So that, for me, would be part of a B.Ed. And I would call that knowledge for practice. Um, two other kinds of knowledge are knowledge in practice, which is very concrete. Um, it's what a teacher learns every day in a classroom um, with an inquiry lens. And the other is knowledge of practice. So we have knowledge for practice, of practice, and in practice. Knowledge of practice is um, school level data about patterns of student, student accomplishment. Um, are resources equitably distributed? Um, are different futures addressed with that? And the, the way those three kinds of knowledge work together um, are what produce professionalism in my view. That if you have a strong teacher community with knowledge of practice and concrete in practice, it serves as a filter for knowledge for practice so you're able to situate it in a way that is meaningful for your school and classroom. So all the things you're learning in a B.Ed. program, um, once you had knowledge of your particular students in school, would kind of be filtered and situated. The beginning point of this paper was certainly when I was teaching. And uh, as I had mentioned in my paper also that uh, I came with the problematic of uh, understanding or, or conceptualizing this relational aspect between the teacher and the taught. I, I had to think about it because for in a teacher's life, it doesn't end uh, with saying that, yes, I teach a student and hence I'm a teacher and that's it. It doesn't end there somehow. Uh, because uh, we have uh, many other aspects because there is a difference uh, uh, age difference between the teacher and the taught, also the difference in the knowledge and experiences. So uh, the teacher being uh, comes comes into being as an 
authority many a times, in a good sense, in a bad sense. But that, that has to be also thought in terms of relational aspects, because it, it, it is a human endeavor and uh, a human practice. So I think uh, a teacher has to think about how do I relate to this pupil? Am I actually a pa I am parenting the child or the student or the person? Am I being a very detached guide kind of a person? Or uh, I am being very authoritative and imposing myself uh, on the learner and then telling him or her to do whatever I want to do. So these are the aspects which force you to think, yes, then how do I relate? And, and hence, we, I uh, brought out these ideas in my paper. I cannot abstract that concept uh, from the context in which Buba has spoken. I, I cannot do so, but still I, I try to do it uh, by saying that uh, not considering the, the learner as an object, object not in an in a inanimate sense also, but also as a human object, but as a being who is the other and I who is also the other from the student or the learner. And there is this mutuality of otherness and acceptance of otherness and this otherness holding and going along in the process of learning and mutually we are learning, we, like the teacher is learning and the student is learning. A teacher at, at present cannot just confine herself to the, uh, to the confines of the school and the classroom. I mean, I mean, yeah, physically it is what she has to do or he has to do. But then at a mental level, she, she, or, uh, she has to abstract herself from that classroom and understand that uh, even though she has to deal with many students, it's each and every student who is there is, as, is equally important. And then uh, that, that understanding of importance and 